Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Um, you see, you can see my screen now. Yes. 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 Oh, thank you. Uh, I think for um, uh, the possibility that you can use mixed method, maybe book big should be, uh, you, you can. But for the master students, sometimes I, I, I recommend you that you, you can use uh, a small survey plus uh, small interviews together, but not in the last scale because you, you know, your master thesis is quite, you know, it's maybe quite more specific rather than you use larger sample or larger groups of participants sometimes. So uh, this topic could be help you to read mixed method research papers effectively, you know, and uh, maybe you can apply uh, this knowledge in the future, but, uh, or you can, you know, choose the qualitative data collection uh, to use in your real research project in the future. I would say that. Um, yeah. I would say around 20 years ago, there's a innovation in methodology. So they did many kinds of, you know, Godfather, right? Uh, John W. Creswell, he, you know, he's, uh, coined this word uh, when you know introduce quality uh, mixed methods research to the field of social science, especially education. So you can see now there are many researchers uh, try to apply mixed method research in their research project, and even in information studies or library and information science. They think we can, you know, uh, bring uh, pros or advantage of both maybe quantitative and qualitative methods together. But as you can see, if you combine or you try to integrate uh, both research methods, it should be very, it should be good in, in, in practice, but in theory, sometimes, you know, just like our programs, we offer you quantitative research methods coursework and another coursework on qualitative, right? So, and we don't offer you mixed method research coursework. So that's your, your turn to think about how to mix uh, both research methods up and maybe you can, you know, try to combine uh, uh, what kinds of research method or data collection and analysis together in your own research proposal. I, I hope so. That's why this my my duty today just introduce or try to show you, uh, let me say, some good examples of designing and conducting mixed method in qualitative research, yeah, in, in real life, you can see. Um, yeah, and again, uh, and some, they, they, just like an example, you, you start with qual uh, quantitative first, like a survey, and then you, uh, you know, conduct focus group by interviewing some, you know, but interviewing participants uh, in, in the small group. 
at the same research project, right? Maybe the second phase, uh, first phase should be uh, survey and the second phase should be a focus group. And, you know, has a uh, try to compare uh, the results between the quantitative or, or survey with interview results. Yeah, that I would say this is quite challenging, you know, it's quite challenging because as you know, you know, survey, they just provide you numbers or statistics, you know, some it's quite solid and, you know, but for quantitative, you have a text, you have to interpret them, but uh, sometimes it's very hard. It would say very, very hard to compare, you know, apple with pears. <laughs> sometimes it's quite, you know, it's, it's different nature, but it's good to, you may, you may, I may say it's good to try <laughs> some, but it depends on your, your research questions first, right? Whatever, I, I, I will say, I have to warn you that some students, they just, you know, when they design research proposal or research project, they just focus only on research methods rather than research questions. And, you know, show maybe some kinds of complicated methods or more advanced methods. But if you say it's a waste of time, it depends on, you know, your research questions. If your research questions have, uh, have to prove uh, with survey data together with explanation from, you know, qualitative data, yes, yeah, just do it. You can use mixed methods in your research project as well. And, and but it depends on, on your, your research questions, yeah. Oh, this is a good one, you know. Um, maybe this is a popular one when you design this uh, mixed method research in your qualitative study sometimes, right? You start with interview individual to describe a topic because at the first stage, you don't know exactly what really happened in the topic that you study. Sometimes you have to start with interviews, right? And when you get the interview findings or qualitative findings, and then you use the qualitative findings to develop a survey instrument. Yeah, this is a, that's kind of popular way that mixed method researcher, they always use this thing and, you know, get the survey data, right? And examine better qualitative finding, generalize the population. Yeah, and this, this way. Um, yeah, you start with uh, what you really don't know first by interviewing individuals and then you get the result from the qualitative phase, right? And then just, you know, keep on to collecting, uh, keep on collecting the survey data in, the, in your second phase. Yeah. This is a very popular way to, to use big methods studies. As you can see, you know, uh, the research problem 
what kinds of research problems that you need to use uh, mixed method in your research project. You, know, you may be a need to compare more complete and collaborative results, and you want to explain initial result first, or even first explore before administering as instruments. Um, some case you don't know exactly uh, what kind of sample in your research project. Maybe the student who have a you know dis disability, or you you have a, some kind of you know uh, very vulnerable. I mean, a vulnerable people. Sometimes you don't know exactly what you want to collect the data from them, so you just have a qualitative research method first to, to, you know, to look for some kind of a potential interviewers, right? And you, and yeah, interviewee, sorry. And, 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 and you have a, you know, involve participant in the study and develop, implement and evaluate program and describe and compare different types of cases. This is a situation that you can choose mixed based of research in your, uh, when you design uh, your research proposal. And you have, maybe you, you, you just to need to know both quantitatively and qualitatively at the same time or in the same research project. This is very uh, popular or, you know, to, to use these kinds of mixed methods. I would say in your field, sometimes you wanna create information systems or software in your or applications in your organization. Maybe you can start with interview to know the expectation or user needs first, and then you develop the software and so way that you know user satisfactions are uh, you know after you you finish uh, the software project software development project sometimes yeah that you you can do uh, both qualitative and quantitative research methods together but in I would say they would say uh, sorry. A chain. Sequential. Yeah, sequential sometimes because you you do qualitative first and then uh, and then quantitative, right? Or you start with quantitative first and then qualitative. Uh, I you say this is sequential. Quality uh, quantity. Yes, both. You can you can start with either uh, qual first and then quant. Oh, uh, so Ajahn, um, is it is it also right to call it exploratory sequential? Ah, oh, okay, you good <laughs> question. Uh, if um, you start with with qual first and then quant you explore them yeah, yes good. yes good and I, I i don't know because i have taken a note with the um, one of the scribbles of my uh mentor last time mm -hmm. and, oh good yeah and he <laughs> and he said that mixed methods have two like mm -hmm. two types something the one is explanatory, sequential. Mm -hmm. So you start from quantity to quality. Mm -hmm. And then the other one is, is ex exploratory, sequential, where mm -hmm. you start from quality to quantity. I don't know if it is this if this is correct or something. <laughs> um, I will say, oh, sorry. Man. Okay. Um, whatever you start with qual or quant, 
and then uh, the next phase you use another method, right? I will say this is sequential. You know mm -hmm. why sequential? Because you have to finish qualitative first and then quantitative, or you can finish quantitative first and then do qualitative later, right? This is sequential. Whatever start with qual or quant, you you can say this sequential. But what your mentor say when you start with qualitative, right? When you start with qualitative, you just, you know, I would say this is explore because you don't know exactly about the subject or the topic you want to study. So that's why you apply like a, uh, you know, uh, in-depth interview or focus group to know their well, to, to know the sample well, right? And when you can know well, know, know the sample well, now you can sampling or sample some kind of, you know, exactly students or exactly users in the quant on in the quantitative phase. That's I say this is exploratory. That um, and many textbook they say uh, exploratory sequential mixed methods something like that um but if you start quantitative first and then do qualitative later in or in the second phase that's mean you need to explain not hurry so you, you try to explain something you know um why you start with quantitative first because you know a lot of literature, you see the factors, you see the variables in theoretical models or hypotheses, right? You, you know many variables, you wanna test hypothesis something, but when you finish the quantitative first, you test everything already, but you need some small groups to explain the reason behind the factors or the reason behind the variable. Why, right? You want to know why? Why students who are lazy, sorry, who are lazy, they got a good grade, you know? <laughs> and yeah, you, you have to want to explain why uh, the lazy student, they got a, uh, a very, a very high GPEX, sometimes like right? a very high score, you need to, 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 to understand exactly what really happened to them. So you, you just shoot, uh, maybe you do 200 students in the survey, right? And, but you pick up only 20 students who are lazy, sorry, that's silly example. But yeah, you, you just, pick up 20 students who are lazy and let them to explain what really happened to their teach, uh, you know, learning style or study habits. And you say this is explanatory. Yeah. And yeah, when we do in class activity together by looking carefully at uh, the, the paper LGBTQ, that as an example, you will see, you know, you, you can realize that it's really, you know, quite, as you said, quite easy to catch up or to notice what kind of mismatch of research design that they use. Yeah. Whatever. But thank you for, for your question. That, that, that might let, uh, give me a good chance to make it clear. <laughs> So to sum up, whatever you start with qual or con, if you finish something first, right? And you get uh, the result from the first phase. So you start the second phase. I will say this is sequential, sequential. But <laughs> if you look at Cresswell textbook, it's quite complicated. Sometimes, you know, 
you can collect quantitative and qualitative at the same time. At the same time, you know, like, that, that like, is literally, like literally the same time, like simultaneous. Yes, but they say convergent, convergent, like a Hollywood movie, right? <laughs> they say it's convergent. We, we, we do at the same time, you know. I, I, I would say, uh, like a big research project, we have uh, two teams, and one team they get quantitative first. Oh, not not first. They they got a quantitative, and another team they collect qualitative data. Yeah, and no need to wait for you finish whatever first. Yeah, you, they finish at the same time. This is convergent, but it, it is not suitable for master student or maybe sometimes PhD student is because it's quite complicated, you know. And for Chris, well, he explained about the field of medical science. Yeah, they have a longitudinal, longitudinal study. So they, they just collect both quantitative and qualitative at the same time. It's quite complicated, but for us, it's quite easy to, you know, to decide sequential decide first <laughs> you, you you know as a master student you have to do everything by yourself right so you have to finish a small survey first and then a small qualitative or small interviews right should be practical and more practical and more realistic <laughs> rather than than to do a convergent <laughs> design right okay and again, to sum up again, when you design sequential, uh, sequential mixed method research, if you start with qual, and you have to, uh, you know, generate something, so you are trying to explore. Uh, they say this is exploratory research, and when you, if you start with quant and then qual, yeah, you have to explanatory, you have to explain something behind the answer of the student or the user you, you study. Thank you for, for your question. And yeah, we can back to the concepts later. Okay. Um, oh, no, so. Again, uh, you see uh, my screen now. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It should be better than <laughs> my explanation <laughs> previously. So when you start with quantitative data collection and analysis, you finish first and you follow up with qualitative data and interpret the qualitative data as well or qualitative findings. I would say this is explanatory sequential design. Yeah, the things. Oh, don't, don't forget I upload uh, the PowerPoint presentation on our Google Classroom already, right? You, you can check it out or uh, review later, review them later. So if you wanted to explain something, it means you start with quant and follow up with qualitative. Yeah, you, you explain something. I would say 
Mm, you can see this pattern or this kind of design in you know in research in the field of library and information science and information study as well. You you already you always yeah they always do something like this to, to explain something. Um, let me give you some example. We want to study the student who study from home. And you don't know exactly they will use library resources or library materials online or not. And you just, you know, do a small survey to ask them about behaviors, their behaviors during study from home, right? And, and, and you say, oh, they, they can, you know, they can uh, play and study to get at the same time. You study with a chance of suck and then you play a game online as well at the same time, you're juggling something. Yeah, this is the answer from the student. And then I want some explanation from them. Oh, why you do that? <laughs> why why do juggling something? You play a game online and never let me know. <laughs> and you and you just pretend to study with me. Why? Why you do that? <laughs> something like that. And, and yeah, this is a you know, explain the result from, from the same way, right? And you can you always see the explanatory sequential design in the library and information science because you we uh, yeah, prefer to do a survey first and then have a small interviews, right? But the issue has come. When you wanna do uh, interviews, right? After you finish the survey, I will ask you <laughs> just to, to wake you up. You want to choose the same student who answer your survey questionnaire, or you will find a new one who <laughs> enjoy playing game and study at the same time. So I will, I will ask you for some reason. What do you think? If you will me, you will invite or ask the same student who answer your the questionnaire in the first phase, first phase, right? And then you, you pick something or you choose the new one. Why? There is the reasons why you, you choose the same or the different. Class. So, uh, in in the qualitative process, um, do we have to uh, do we have to focus on on every topic from the quantitative process? I mean, or we can choose only one topic or only one research question that we want to um explore more. Um. Yeah, good question, Pukpik. And we can learn together with in class activities in the next section, next next session. Huh? But at, at, at the moment, um I would say for mixed method research, they mix together. I will say that you can have, yeah. We always see quantity, I mean research question to be answered with quantitative research method. And then you have another question to ask for qualitative question as well at the same time. Yeah, we got both. <laughs> yeah, good question. So if you think your research questions 
have both quantitative and qualitative, I think you have to be you have to work harder and harder to answer both research questions at the same time. Yes. So uh, we, I mean, we should have, uh, we should design different series of, uh, no, series of different questions for quantitative first and qualitative first. Um, it depends on if you uh, design explanatory sequential like this slide, Mm -hmm. It means you have to finish developing research questions first and, and, and answer your question. I mean, you have to think about your research question first before you start collecting quantitative and then qualitative. Yeah, that's, that is a sequential. But for conversion or any kinds of, you know, complicated things, sometimes you can, uh, you know, they separate the phase. Yeah, you, you finish the, the first phase first, and then you just develop, uh, I mean, research question for qualitative study in the next round or in the next phase sometimes. But it's quite complicated. I don't, I don't, recommend you to do for master <laughs> thesis yeah. so that really depends on the research question and the research design right yeah, um, yeah. so what we can design mm -hmm. um, um yeah it, it depends on your research questions but why why i say this design is quite popular you know let me give you some example like a uh, users, library users now, right? When we ask them about the quality of library service and mm -hmm. we always do the survey, right? But mm -hmm. you lack of explanation why they like or dislike library services. Mm -hmm. That's why in the present, yeah, we enjoy to mix quantitative and qualitative data in the same project. You know, just oh, okay, you surveys that uh, the library users certify the services or not, and then yeah, that's it. I mean, for the survey, right? No need. Yeah, yeah. You you just finish it. But at the moment, you know, you want to need uh, you don't you don't know to follow up the survey results by you know inviting some kinds of student as a representative of each group and you interview them more about the reason why they're happy with the library services. Yeah. And I will say, don't get me wrong. Uh, some, when you do survey to get a big interview, but we don't call it expert of research at all. You know what I mean? because your survey results and interview finding, you present them separately. You know, you said, uh, yeah, you, you present them separately. So don't call it mixed method. You just use multiple method of data collection. Mm. You just only <laughs> use multiple method of data collection. But if you compare and contrast and you try to interpret both quantitative and qualitative findings as a whole, yeah, I will say that you do mixed method research. Yeah, don't, 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 don't get me wrong and don't, don't be confused about multiple data collection. Why I say that? Yeah, like uh, my expertise, I am very keen with case study research method. But as you know, case study research method, they use multiple methods of data collection at the same time. But I don't, but I didn't do mixed method at all because I didn't, you know, 
have a document analysis, right? I analyze the policy document, but I didn't use the policy documents that I found to match or compare and contrast with the interview. No, I don't do that. Uh, the policy document just, uh, for me, it's just the background to let the audience know well uh, in the organization that I collect the data from them. But I, I didn't use the policy documents or policy data at all to compare and contrast with the interview. So I do case study research method, but I didn't do mixed method research at all. Yeah. You, you, you clear that? Yeah, you, you get uh, yeah, the point I, I wanna yeah. I wanna raise. Yeah. Um, it's good if you choose the multiple. But it depends on your research question as well. Yeah, that, and you choose multiple methods of data collection in your research project. But if you didn't decide like a explanatory sequential design, no, you can't call you, you do the mixed method research. How sad it is when you read, <laughs> I, I don't know exactly in, in, in Thai journal, right? Thai journal article, some, they claim that they use mixed method research. But I said, no, you didn't do mixed method research. You just use multiple methods of data collection and analysis. You didn't do mixed method. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. So that's why I just recommend them to, to improve or revise the word they use because they didn't design much, uh, yeah, mixed method research and all. Uh, also, the the point is that it's not only the the method that we use. It's not it's just not the combination of the methodology, right? But we have to think about like the relationship or highlight um between the data that we use. Mm -hmm. between two methods, right? Yeah. <laughs> but I will say for Creswell, I will say is you can't claim that you do mixed method research because it's come from your, your idea or your personal belief. You know what I mean? <laughs> um, even I would say even you collect uh, the interview data and you display them in numbers. <laughs> you know what I mean? You, you interview uh, 10 students and you display in the number, you know, in the table number, you know, <laughs> you, you have, okay, three call that and two call <laughs> You are quantitative in mind. <laughs> <laughs> so for me, uh, for Creswell, in theory, it's very hard to, to do mixed method research because you, you have to think about quantitative and qualitative at the same time. <laughs> me too. I can't call, oh, I'm, I'm very keen or expertise in, in mixed method research. No, I just use multiple methods of data collection analysis together because I, I still think about quantitative, me too, <laughs> because it's quite easy to, 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 to explain or to, to exploring something right? in numbers, me too. <laughs> you still collect interview data and analyze uh, the interview transcript, right? Like uh, Ajahn Thor trained you, but you can display the result in numbers. You said that this is quantitative in my quantitative, yeah, quantitative mind. How about the design ladies? Um, for example, um, we maybe we design or we like create create the program like the software program like that, mm -hmm. and then we trying to take the disability for 
um maybe test something or interview or um do something to get more data so is this the mix method no or... <laughs> no how do you say that you just use uh why because when you yeah like a user research right or ux ux research yes, sometimes sir. you just you know you can you 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 use many methods of data collection to make sure that you can design the system right or the software and you test the software by asking some users right and how sad it is some some user is not provide you information in the first place you know what I mean? so you ask someone in the first place right you ask by by using the survey a survey questionnaire in the first place and you develop the system and for the second phase you want to test the system but you record you recruit someone that different from the first phase to test your your system you know this is not not mixed method at all yeah. no <laughs> and you can you know you can realize the the, the characteristic or the attributes of, of mixed method research better i mean in the in our second session after the break then you you, you can read ah, yeah we can read the article together i'm sorry it's not from the field of information study but it's a very good one <laughs> to to compare and yeah teach you maybe better than my explanation you can learn from the real life of research papers okay so maybe it's time to have a break first for five minutes and yeah see you later okay then god could you pause the recording for us now i hope you can access the pdf document uh, via the link that i provide you on the chat box and we can learn together um, okay uh, just forget about the topic uh, maybe it's quite different from I mean, in the field of information studies or library and information science, but it's a very good example how the researchers in this research project, they design by using the mixed method approach. Yeah, mixed method research in the studies. Just start with the introduction yeah wins or uh, vincent or Pope, could you tell me um on the page on the second page yeah page two um they say why they choose or uh, make a decision to do quantitative data driven right quantitative driven something yeah can you point out uh, the paragraph or the sentences that identify the reason why they choose the, quant uh, the qualitative or oh, mixed method maybe so. Uh, the first, I mean, uh, mm -hmm. wait, 
can we access to your what uh, your document Ajan, or are we going to base it on our copy here um yeah you you uh, we can you, you 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 can let me know and and, and we yeah I, I will show my screen and highlight something that uh -huh. says to me yeah oh okay so uh the sentence the like the start of the second paragraph in the second mm -hmm. page like although there are well established relationships between poverty and health and mm -hmm. lgbt and identity and health few mm -hmm. studies have considered how lgbtq identity and poverty may operate with concern with concert to determine health so i think um mm -hmm. the previous the parent study only mm -hmm. showed or the uh, existing studies only showed this kinds of relationship, but not mm -hmm. the uh, the gender identity and poverty. Yeah, Good. yeah. So I think yes. so. So they deemed it necessary to um do a qua do a mixed method in mm -hmm. line with the parent study. Yeah. Good one. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Vince. So as you can see from, from the paragraph and the sentence that Win show us, I will say, yeah, this is a good example to use literature, right? To, to justify or give the reason why you choose the mixed method to do something in the topic, right? If you look carefully for the previous literature, they just study the relationship between poverty and health, right? Mm. Poverty and health. And for LGBTQ groups, they study only identity and health. Mm. But for this research project, they study LGBTQ identity and poverty. And poverty. Yes, this is a new one. This is a very good one to, to show why. <laughs> you deserve to do <laughs> to do a new research project right even there are many researchers right previously study on the poverty and health but not enough right you need to study lgbtq group by you know matching the identity and their poverty together right so mm -hmm. it's a very good one yeah like uh, we didn't say and if you can see they say, oh, one exception is a quantitative study, right? But they say, few, they use few study, right? Few study, even a good mm -hmm. one. So, so, but yeah, you need more. We, we, we need more study to do that thing, right? Yeah, a very good example. Vincent or Pupik, anything else for the next paragraph? Yeah. Um, I, I think they um indicate about their previous research project mm -hmm. that use the quantitative approach. Yeah. And they um, say that because of um, it's kind of like they need more um, mm -hmm. explanation from yeah. kind of like that. So mm -hmm. in this study, they use a qualitative approach. Yeah, good. To um, expand, yeah. yeah. Okay, I will, sorry, I will highlight it for you. Uh, you say uh, traditional quantitative methods, right? Limit our capacity to understand contextual factors. So, mm. yeah, e e even the, yeah, this is a big, a big, big project. So at the first phase, maybe they use uh, quantitative, right? A lot to survey uh, LGBTQ. To identify, yeah, for identity and their poverty, right? So it's time to do something deeper by use qualitative methods, right? To, to, to understand contextual factors again. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Pukpik. 
Vincent, Scrap, how about theoretical approach now? How about theoretical approach now? I will ask Vincent more specific first. With theoretical approach, what do you think, or uh, what kind of research method will begin first? Right, <laughs> or start first in this research project. Have a guess, Vincent. Um, they would um initially do a quality qualitative. Mm -hmm. Wait, uh, Theoretical. Oh, sorry. Theoretical. You sure? <laughs> so they start with theoretical approach, or they say, oh, transformative paradigm, right? Yes. Uh, yeah, some kinds of sexual transformation, something paradigm. So, what do you think? They start with quantitative or qualitative first? Quan we threw up on it. Yeah, <laughs> right, <laughs> <You're> correct. <laughs> now, quantitative. sorry, I make you confused. <laughs> they start with quantitative first. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Why? Because they use theoretical or theory, right? Transformative paradigm to guide their uh, research design, right? So that's why I would say, uh, you can guess or you can have a guess uh, what kinds of research method that they begin in the research project first. I would say it's quantitative because they start with theory. Yes, yes. Oh, sorry. Sorry, Vincent. It's okay. It's okay. 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 And uh, the current study now, uh, as you can see, Wins, now your turn. <laughs> Wins, how many research questions you find in the research paper, in this research paper? How many research questions? Oh, sorry, Vince, could you turn on the microphone? Sorry, sorry about that. Okay. So uh, in this study, there is only one primary research question, mm -hmm. but it mm -hmm. stems to two sub questions with mm -hmm. uh, specific into a quantitative strand and a mm -hmm. qualitative strand. Yeah, good. So basically, so, there are three. Yeah, three. <laughs> Thank you, Vince. So this example should be answer book fix question in the yeah in the first break, right? Because uh book big answer how many research questions for mixed method research and wins, <laughs> you know, answer us about <laughs> yeah, uh, this research project, they have a one primary research question, right? What are the mental health service experience? <laughs> Yeah, something blah, blah, blah. 
but the separate uh, sub questions into two strands, quantitative first and then qualitative. That means, I mean, at the end of this paper, they will answer both research sub questions as well. Yeah. So it, it depends on, yeah, it depends on uh, your research questions. So they got, yeah, three, <laughs> three, yeah. Okay, your turn now in the part of study design. Uh, yeah, we have thought study design. Yeah. Which kind of mixed method research design they use? I think it's a sequen sequential, sequential, mm -hmm. right? Yes. It's a it's for the explanatory. Yes, if, thank you. If, oh, it's fine. Oh, sorry, Kat, it's explanatory. Yeah. Sequential explanatory. Oh, okay. <laughs> yes. And again, <laughs> book picks and book answers wins questions <laughs> in the first break because if, yeah, it's a good one, uh, it's a good example you have to identify explicitly about the kinds of design you use, I mean, for your mixed method, your mixed methods research. Yeah, you have to, you know what I mean? Uh, yeah, they, they, they identify exactly, yeah, explicitly, yeah, they use a sequential explanatory mixed methods design. Yeah, they, they, they just identify, yeah, or specify exactly what they want to use. Yeah, sequential as well. Uh -huh. is, it, is it necessary to identify uh, like the, 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 the name of the, the method, like the sequential explanatory, like highlight that in, in our article? Yes, I would say that. It looks like a, you know, a custom. <laughs> for big space of research, do you, you say that? Uh, do you mind if you click on the number 21 citation, right? Index citation. I guess it's Creswell. <laughs> it's Creswell work, I guess. <laughs> yes, Creswell. <laughs> yes. Designing and conducting. Yeah. So <laughs> that's it. Um, oh. to, <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. So, the model, I will say that, uh, the, the, the model for designing this method of research, yeah, they always cite or refer Creswell's textbook, <laughs> designing and conducting this research. And yeah, you have to identify exactly <laughs> what kinds, yeah, what kind of big method of research design you use. Okay. It is a classic. This is a plastic one or special coin this term? Yes. This is a classic one. I will say every mixed methods researchers, they always rely on this textbook to call uh, the model, the design model oh. of business of research. Yeah. Thank you. And Vincent, your turn. <laughs> So they claim that they use sequential explanatory mixed method design. So the second phase, they will start with what? <laughs> the first phase of this research project, they will start with what? The first phase, they start with um... Right. The, second phase. the second phase. Yes. The second. You're referring to the second phase, right? right. Yes. For the second All phase, right. they they mm -hmm. they started with. Um, mm -hmm. Take your time. <laughs> Mm 
-hmm. The first way is the internet based survey, right? Yeah, and the one. second one, one. <laughs> they five. use a semi structure quantitative interviews. Yes. So quant first and then qualitative. We call explanatory mixed method. Yeah, explain. <laughs> you use the qual phase to explain the quant phase. You know, I mean, yeah. Okay. Thank you. Um next page four. <laughs> Page four wins your turn. <laughs> Page four. Uh, what kind of qualitative data analysis they use in the qualitative phase or the qualitative strand? Right? Yes, the qualitative strand. Oh, they have used the uh, they have utilized the thematic narrative analysis thank you yes. you know this is a good example you have to tell the audience or the reader exactly the techniques or the methods you use for analyzing the qualitative data yes. thank you and again um what you choose, you have to explain the reason why you choose them, right? Okay. Pukpik, your turn. It's time to look <laughs> at recruitment and participants. <laughs> yeah. Um, I will ask you, it's quite difficult, right? <laughs> now, the survey respondents, they are the same group of interviewees or not? <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Yes, yes. Um... Yeah. Take your time. <laughs> Yes, it is. <laughs> uh, which uh, what the paragraph? Yeah, number, number, number three, number mm -hmm. three and four. Mm -hmm. Because the potential interview participant was selected from the two of the way respondents. Mm -hmm. So that means yeah. the same group of oh, the. Okay. <laughs> So they yes. just pick up, right? Pick up some. Yes. That is a potential interviewees, right? Yeah. Good. Good. Yeah. Some uh, in this project is about LGBTQ or the transgender, or is the transgender was approved from this study? Um, they try to cover every okay. types of yeah of this group. They try. But for you, yeah, you, you ask in advance. Uh, they will mention about the limitation of this research, yeah, at the end of the of, of the article. Yeah. <laughs> Please wait for the, the, the explanation. Okay, okay, thank you. So we'll pick uh, answers yes. yes, we have a uh, same person right or the same people but they just pick up from from the survey phase right yeah they say oh potential interview participants were selected from the pool of survey respondents 
you, you can see on the screen now, yeah, in, in the interview sections, you know, this is, we can call it, we can call it mixed methods research. Yeah, we can call it mixed method research. Why? Because they have the same people, right? Even small one, smaller number, but mm -hmm. it's okay. Is it the same one? Is it the same group? Yeah, who, who willing, who are willing to join the interviews, right? Good one. Yeah, willingness to be contact as a follow up interview. Yes. For example, if they change the, the interview into the other group of people and separate from the people from phase one in the survey, so mm -hmm. is it a mix with that or is it not? Um, I would say just as I tell you that. They say, oh, they use multiple methods of data collection. Oh. <laughs> not, not mixed methods in mind. <laughs> so as you can see, yeah, Fukui say, you are right. Uh, for the mixed method, you have to start with mixed method research questions first. Right? At the beginning of the project, you, you, know, you develop research questions, right? to, I mean, that relevant to mixed method research design, right? You have a, like a win set, you have primary research question first, right? And you've got sub research question. Yeah, you, you've got sub question in quantitative strand and then the quant qualitative strand. So you do mixed method research. Yeah, I would say that. <laughs> and then, yeah, you, you use the same people, but you just have a cherry picking, right? You, you choose someone, something that's quite, maybe a very good case, right? They, they, for LGBTQ, like you say, oh yeah, they try to cover L, G, B, T, and Q. So yeah, they, they just pick up some, some interesting case to do interview later. Thank you. Vincent, now oh, your turn. <laughs> Page six now. Page six now. Um, before the start of uh, data analysis section, can you see following the interview? Yes, this is you are dealing with et, uh, research ethics now. Vincent, why? <laughs> Maybe this is a good example of your term paper <laughs> at SIU. On page six, Vincent, <laughs> yes. in the sentence, they say, oh, following the interview, blah, 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 LGBTQ community resources. I will say this sentence deal with research ethics. Why? <laughs> I think uh, because uh, it was mentioned there that participants receive cash honorariums. Yes. <laughs> and it's like, uh, it might give, uh, mm -hmm. like, for example, um, the, the cash honorariums may be uh, like um, um, in exchange for a certain uh, yeah. paper. Uh, probably might in exchange for a more favorable answer. So, and normally when, when we give honor, cash uh, honorarium and the term honorarium, mm -hmm. more of there is an expected, um, uh, it might give a, a, a it, you might um, somehow um, have the chance to influence the uh, respondent. Especially it's a cash on her. <laughs> yeah, you can try. Yeah. So this is the way you can apply to your term paper. 
What the point? I, I did, why I asked Vincent? Because they study mm -hmm. LGBTQ group mm -hmm. who are poor. You know, sorry, I have a strong word. Have a poverty, right? And you give them cash mm -hmm. like a reward after yeah. you finish interview. Mm -hmm. So I RB from Chulalongkorn University. They will ask you. Why you Thank give you. them cash? Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. and yeah, and what concern? Because they are poor LGBTQ people. They are poor, so it's why have a conflict of interest, right? Something like that. I think but, it yeah. would be more. It would be less conflicting if, uh, if if this study would not use really the term cash honorarium. Yeah. It, yeah. it it will give a, a a an impression that they are being somehow paid after being <laughs> being interviewed. Yes. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> so, and again, this article they specify yeah exactly the article yeah, we choose that's concerned with with your interview participants. Right, it's mm -hmm. a very good one. Again, get back to wins <laughs> in the section of data analysis, right? Data analysis. Um, okay. What do you think, wins? How, what the difference um, between quantitative analysis and qualitative analysis, what you can see or what you can spot or notice the differences between two methods that they mix in research in this research project. Oh. I'll take your time. <laughs> uh. Take your time. Sorry, Vince. I joined. Uh, while Vince is um, thinking of the anthropogenic, I just like I, I just noticed uh, also similar to what you've said a while ago regarding the ethical issue on uh, before the interview. There's also a statement there wherein they gave also a ten dollar gift gift card as compensation. <laughs> so that, um, uh, that yeah would. That would that is above the interview. Yes. Um, as you can see, because they start with uh, online based survey, mm -hmm. so it's it's not any free of charge. <laughs> free of, yeah. yeah, yeah, no, yeah, no cost mm -hmm. of data collection, right? But when you invite them to the office or somewhere to do a interview sometimes you just you know give them cash because like a travel cost yeah transportation cost something yeah it's not about the reward right <laughs> you said it's not, not a good word for me it's oh. not a reward but yeah it's a uh, some kinds of yeah help them for transportation cost yeah or to cover cost. the expense they might have yeah okay um Ajan. Ah. Okay, for the quantitative analysis, uh, mm -hmm. they have grouped the, uh, they have constructed four mutually exclusive groups in order to, uh, mm -hmm. on the basis of participant categorization mm -hmm. um, yeah. as LGBT versus, uh, you know, basically they have grouped it, it mm -hmm. into four and in the qualitative approach they have used the trans interview transcript as a unit mm -hmm. of analysis so basically um in the quantitative analysis they have grouped it into four and they have used mm -hmm. those groupings into uh, i mean um un interpreting the data or analyzing mm -hmm. the uh, data and then in the qualitative they have they instead of grouping them into four um uh, what they did is they used the transcript as the unit 
of analysis in the team uh, in their thematic analysis. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, that's what I've noticed. Okay, good. But for qualitative analysis, it's quite interesting for me because they explain that the first author, right, they review 12 selected transcripts. Mm. Mm -hmm. And another, the second author review the note, right? They separate their duties uh, mm. to be two. Oh, yes, yeah. yes. It is very interesting. Yeah. And, you know, add her own analytic comment as well for the second author. <laughs> it is, they, they, they separate their responsibility, right? The two mm -hmm. authors yeah. for qualitative analysis is very, very interesting. Oh, and in that process, they have quote unquote developed the core team. Mm -hmm. I mean, the yes. two authors. Two authors, yes. They separate or they have their own jobs <laughs> to, to do this uh, uh, between the mirror transcripts and notes, right? Take notes when you interview something. Book big for the page seven. Yeah. Know, the first paragraph of page seven. What do you see? I mean, before the section of resolve, sorry, what do you see? Yeah, they, they represent the, the quantitative writing. Mm -hmm. Oh, no, 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 sorry, separate. before the before the quantitative finding, the, the paragraph before the quantitative finding, sorry. Uh, yes, um, they, they're trying to, to tell us that they, um, they, 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 they integrate, integrated, integrated the data in the discussion section, mm -hmm. so that means in the result they separate separate the, the, the finding from the quantitative one and the qualitative one, but they integrate all of them in the discussion. Yes, so for big <laughs> Vince and Vincent as well, that you can claim the audience you use mixed method research because you have a mixed methods analysis mm -hmm. to integrate quantitative and qualitative together, you have a new, uh, new parts of your research report or new parts of your research article. This is, you can call, you use mixed method research now. Why? Because you have mixed method research questions, right? And you mix methods uh, between quantitative and qualitative by using Creswell term, sequential exploratory mixed method of research design, right? Yeah, this is the second one. And then the analysis, you can, you can note, if you use mixed methods, it means you have to use mixed methods analysis as well. So you mix the quantitative and qualitative results together. Yes, good, and yeah. And you can, you know, interpret the result of the two strands in the discussion section. This is a good one. So the mixed method, you need mixed method analysis as well. So, so this is a very good example to explain the audience or the readers that you use mixed method analysis as well. So that's why, oh, Many researchers, they claim use method research. No, they use multiple methods of data collection again for me because you don't, you don't go further to integrate quantitative and qualitative results. Yeah. And this article is perfect so, uh, example. Uh, okay. And now, for the result quantitative findings. Wins, now your turn. Uh, 
uh, what uh, attributes or characteristics of quantitative findings now? So Nick, <laughs> related to our next week class, <laughs> we have to learn about writing and presenting the results. What kind of quantitative findings they try to display? Yeah. Mm. Um, they have displayed the social demographic. Mm -hmm. Is it? And wait. Um, Anything else? <laughs> Wait. Uh, <laughs> sorry, Jan. <laughs> no problem. I mean, they, they, they have only shown two tables, but mm -hmm. in the first table, they have um, indicated the social demographic characteristics of mm -hmm. LGBT uh, by showing the uh, LGBT identity and the low income measure or the LIM. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. So, uh, according to the first table, mm -hmm. so you can, as we say, you can scope uh, the characteristic of LGBTQ in your sample yes. now, right? Yeah. Yes. Really yes. Uh, you can scope the identity and where do they land in the LIM range. Yeah. yeah, good. So you can see from the table one, they have a LGBTQ with low income measure, right? Yes. So yeah, this is, I will say the first column should be your next interview participants. Because they study mm -hmm. uh, LGBTQ who have a, Poverty, <laughs> who have poverty, yeah. This is a good one. Yes, yes. But I think, um, ah, the, the, I mean, uh, by, by looking at the table, you can mm -hmm. have a rough uh, insight on yes. the result of your uh, study. Mm -hmm. There's, uh, so, basing here, there's a lot of, um, LGBTQ with ah, uh, which is um, in the low income measure, mm -hmm. but I mean the number of not in LIM LGBTQ with yep. uh, which is not is much higher than the um uh it's so it's much higher than those mm -hmm. of uh qualified in LIM yeah so yeah. yeah. Correct. Yeah. So that's why uh, the researchers start with uh, internet-based survey first. Yeah. It's a very, very good things, you know, because it's, there are some varieties, right, of LGBTQ and hmm. not just identity, but it's about, yeah, income. They thought. Yeah. Good one. Um, so so that means in the in the in, in this phase, the in the the survey you send to 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 people, um, they they didn't limit with the gender, right? Yes, yes, um, correct. And <laughs> um, I will say that they will mention again in the you know at the end of this research paper, I mean, they, they mentioned about the limitations of this research. And, and, and we show, show you and ask you <laughs> later, right? They, they, they will mention this. Thank you to, to support. This is a limitation. Yeah. 
we, we, we uh, don't know exactly. Uh, it's very hard to, to I would say, to, to approach directly, right, to LGBTQ, but uh, gender or uh, education level or uh, even income, right, is a uh, sensitive and very vulnerable people. Yeah. And how about now, Vincent, your turn. <laughs> how about the qualitative findings? It's very hard to represent the result, right? But how they represent the qualitative findings? <laughs> how did they represent the qualitative findings? And Vince and Pukpik, you can help Vincent as well. They will start from page nine. Page nine now. I talk, I, I asked you about, yeah, the characteristic, uh, yeah, the special display. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm done. Yeah. Okay. Um, first, they have um discussed in general but mm -hmm. to but in order for them to have a clearer um mm -hmm. I, in order for them to give a clearer context on what mm -hmm. the responses they have uh, the authors um decided to share quote unquote share the narratives of the four yeah. of the participants yeah. yeah so basically they have quoted they extracted the I don't know if it this is verbatim or non-verbatim, but uh they have shown uh the responses of four of the mm -hmm. the participants. Yeah, good. They try to tell the stories, right? Of the yes. four participants. Yeah. Good, good. They start with the overall. Yeah, that I would say that mm. the, the overall uh overview of the you know interviews right and then just try to more specific by you know telling the story of four participants and vincent again <laughs> you deal with ethical issues again what kinds of ethical issues that you can see from qualitative findings <laughs> Vincent, you will. Vincent, hi. Yeah, sorry, I mute. Uh, oh, sorry. I, um, I, I, I noticed uh, since they post, uh, as Vince mentioned a while ago, they posted the, uh, they chose you no know, four of the interviews, but mm -hmm. if you notice here, they, they, they mentioned the, the name of the interviewee. Mm -hmm. Um and and yeah, some that unlike uh yeah the, yeah that's one of the things that I I I, I noticed here. Did they mention the uh the um the, the name of the interview and they really I think they posted the exact text, mm -hmm. uh, the exact script that was being given by the interview. Okay. Atanka, can you, <laughs> uh, talking about ethical issues when you represent qualitative findings uh -huh. in this research article? Okay. Um... Uh, from this research, as uh, Vince had mentioned that uh, they use the analytic, thematic uh, narrative analysis, mm -hmm. right? And they interviewed uh, about 24 participants, isn't it? 
And then after analyzing the data, they conclude the results were uh, presented as four stories for four, I would say, four key pat yep. patterns, mm -hmm. right? And then they named their name like Kirk story. They use the pseudonyms, yes. right? Pseudonyms. Pseudonyms. Yes. To disguise so, the real name. <laughs> so, uh, probably these stories, uh, I mean, story are not, how is it? The, the, uh, for stories, for key patterns that we found from the in 24 interviews. Mm -hmm. Can 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 you get this? Did you get me? <laughs> I'm going to try to say that you interview a lot, right? 24 participants and 12 interviews that you used for analyzed, but the data from the interview, you analyze and you, I mean, the data reveal that they have four uh, main uh, behavior or patterns of LGBTQ. And they summarize into four, uh, like to show, because they use the narrative analysis way. So they, uh, present the findings as a story of four person with different, I mean, four distinguished behavior patterns. Okay. And Kirk is the pseudonym, not the real person, not the real one. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I love the, the story they try to illustrate because they, you know, Entitle the mm -hmm. entitle the the story right or Kirk's story they they call like a title of the story right so I don't feel useless anymore mm -hmm. <laughs> so that yeah after you read the title and you know exactly just like Ajahn Gov say they pick up only four because it's quite unique it's a unique story it's a catchy story to to show how LGBTQ who you know, who poor, who are poor and, you know, have uh, maybe treat not well in, mm. in terms of, you know, medical and social services, right? It, yeah, so it's a very good things to, to show the example of qualitative findings. <laughs> and again, they show the quotations, right? Many quotations uh, speak by Kirk's and then Rachel's. <laughs> yeah. And as you can see, they claim that they use uh, mixed method, sequential explanatory mixed method research or qualitative driven. So the part of qualitative analysis are longer than quantitative mm -hmm. findings, right? <laughs> or, or the survey, you know the difference now? So they say, oh, I try to explain the LGBTQ uh, reasons or their behavior or their understanding of social services, right? And, you know, that's why uh, this part of qualitative analysis or qualitative findings are longer than internet survey or internet survey is the first class of quantitative results, right? It's quite long, mm. many pages. <laughs> A lot. And Deborah's. Oh, you see, I love one. It's a Deborah story say it's like buying a lottery ticket on, yeah, on page 14. Right? Her life like a buying lottery ticket. <laughs> so 
so it's very good one. It's quite long. <laughs> so. Um, uh, we will pass through the, I mean, page 20, page 20 now. So I allow you five minutes to read the last paragraph of research article of this research article and tell me what kind of limitation they face in this research project. Oh, sorry, paragraph, oh, all oh, of oh, page 20, sorry, all <laughs> of oh, page 20. Vince, Vincent and Bookbeak, just give me your answer about limitation of this research project. Um, the, one of the limitations, yeah. One of the limitations of this study is that they were unable to determine what extent. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, yeah, the statement there that our quantitative sample reflects the broader population of the LGBTQ yes. people living in poverty. Yeah, good. The extent yeah. of. Uh, mm -hmm. So they just confess that they can't cover every types of, of LGBTQ population, right? Yeah, good, good. Vincent Pukpi. The other, the other limitation that I've um, noticed here is mm -hmm. that, uh, at the parent, I mean, um, at the parent survey, mm -hmm. the poverty was not a priority focus on the yes. qualitative interviews. So, mm -hmm. uh, and during those times, they did not foresee a narrative analysis or they did not envision a narrative analysis at that time. So, um, the authors may have resulted uh, the, the, the study may have resulted in less depth of exploration mm -hmm. um, of relevant topic, topics in interviews than might other, otherwise have been possible. So basically, they are uh, in doing the qualitative um, mm -hmm. um, sequence, they are now bounded by the limitations of what uh, uh, the limitations of the first um, mm -hmm. survey so yeah. they they cannot go beyond further mm -hmm. in terms of the uh, the data that was uh, already there yeah mm -hmm. yes uh, and with that also um uh their their findings cannot extend to sexual minority and cisgender mm -hmm. heterosexual men because yeah. i think in the first uh, in the parent survey they just focused on transgender mm -hmm. and transgender woman. Yeah. But they did not include it, or I don't know if they, they did not include it, or um, there is a, a, yeah, I think they did not include it, the cisgender heterosexual men. Mm -hmm. Yeah, good. Yeah. And again, they can cover or uh, study uh, every, <laughs> Types, right? It's Every type gender. of activity. Yeah. Yeah. And Pukpik, how about your support to the limitation of this research? Um, yeah, I just found 
same as we like mm -hmm. the the um I think um this article they rely on the the terms like LGBT too, I like that and um it's I don't know but I agree with them that if it, this is a limitation um to expand more results for the the other group of the the gender so it's like kind of like, um sexual minority and cis gender like in states and um. Yeah, it's, it's one of the limitations, but um, I think how about if we can like provide the choice in the survey, yeah. I, I don't know, but for example, like it's just adding more, more choice for the cisgender gender or highlighted, or we didn't have to pay attention on, on, on the type of gender. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. I, I don't know if it's, it's a limitation or not. I, I'm, I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but 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 I agree with them. It's one, it's one um group of people that we have to to study more. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. So, this is a good example, and yeah, all of you answer us about, you know, this is a limitation. I will. I will let you know that when you develop your research proposal, it means, I will say, every research project is not perfect, but you know your strength, you know your weakness, and yeah, you try to reduce that weakness, right? But yeah, but it's not 100% reduction, so you would accept the truth that you are, uh, your research project is quite limited to something, right? Like, oh, you can cover every type of population. Uh, you can't interview everyone that you want, right? So it's just show some kind of LGBTQ, just like you say, actually not LGBTQ, everything, right? Not everything, but it's just, like uh, we said, it's just uh, a transgender woman who living in poverty and something, right? It's, it's just a, a snapshot when, when, you, when you try to study something and you just let the readers on audience or thesis reader to know that, okay, you realize the limitation and you try to reduce them, but it's not 100% 100, 100 prevention, right? It's a real research project as you can, you, you, you can, you know, uh, show that you realize them. Yeah, and, and let the, the audience know. I think I need something. For example, I just want to know that how they measure the low income. I mean, I think in the quantitative section, right? Or, um, or didn't they indicate in the article? or not um, i mean how they feel i mean in, in the interview section um how they feel that if they be like um include in the low income lgbt too um yeah, i don't know question. yeah but but actually they mentioned about the previous surveys i mean in the in the part of introduction they're talking about so In the introduction, they, they, they're talking about the previous. Yes. The previous quantitative research by our team. So I guess they quite have a private data about mm -hmm. survey respondents who have a, you know, LGBTQ status. So yeah, that, that, that's why they have a, you know, uh, indirect measure to talking about low income. Yeah. Yeah. And, 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 and yeah, and this is a good one to, to show, yeah, related to, you know, in relation to your term paper, right? You get, <laughs> yes. you, you get or collect and analyze the data from vulnerable people, but 
this this is a very tough one because LGBTQ, right? It's not it's not not not, not good. It's quite vulnerable and sensitive, and they're poor. They are poor, and they have a low income. Yeah, everything <laughs> that you can do. So that that's why they just have a skip. Yes, they they skip the the personal data about about the financial or the income they use. Um, I will say this beyond my explanation, but as you can see from the trend, when we design questionnaire now, right? We didn't, maybe you try to skip uh, the gender question and <laughs> the income question, something of any kind of sensitive and you don't want to connect or test something uh, among variables, right? If, if you don't want to compare and contrast and see relation among uh, these variables, please don't ask them. You know, I mean? yeah, please don't don't ask the gender, don't ask the the, the the budget, or don't ask the income. If you don't want to relate it, right? You 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 to relate the variable, yeah, just let it empty, <laughs> don't, don't do that. So I, I think it's just quite a, a trend of designing research instruments now, right? So that's some kind of sensitive and, and you learn from a top a lot about uh, uh, analyze the interview data, you have to pseudonyms, right? So <laughs> to disguise the real name and Vincent, you learn how you, you can pay cash <laughs> as a reward for, for respondents and, you know, and everything you have to declare, right? To declare to, to the IRB committee. And again, you have to, <laughs> to you know, give us, give me an agenda in details in your term paper. <laughs> A lot. Yes. Okay. And should be a good example of sequential exploratory mixed method research design. And again, to sum up again, so if you can call your research project is mixed method, it means you have mixed method research question, and you have a mixed method research design, and you have a mixed methods of data collection, and you have a this method data analysis, right? And you have to discuss uh, or interpret uh, the findings after you finish or uh, comparing quantitative and qualitative data at the same time. And don't forget to mention about your limitation now. How sad, I mean, uh, no, uh, for many Thai theses, they just skip or don't want to mention the limitation, but no, if you read, uh, you know, read some thesis from USA or UK or Australia, this part is very important. Why? Because for the audience or thesis reader, they will be aware of the limitation. Oh, yeah, no research project is perfect, right? Yeah. So, so they're just aware, you not try to overclaim, yeah, overclaim your research result. Yeah, but you, you, you do your best, you try your best, but you recognize your limitation as well. Yes. So yeah, this is, if, if you can cover everything, so no one can uh, contribute or even, you know, uh, up the level or, or something of you find, right? Because you cover everything already. So it's impossible to do that thing. <laughs> That's it. Uh, maybe we can have a break now, five minutes and see you. Thank you. Uh, Jankov, could you please <laughs> pause recording? Thank you. <laughs> and, you know, I know that you're very tired. 
of your study because a lot of assignments, a lot of term paper, <laughs> right? <laughs> and you have a deadline for <laughs> from a chunk of data, you know, <laughs> data coding, right? <laughs> so, so good news, yeah, no homework. <laughs> for our <laughs> for our class now yeah <laughs> so <Yay. laughs> yeah no homework so you have a just uh, exercise for fun to to test your understanding about mixed method research and again the first one i will give you to Vincent first Yes. <laughs> no need to worry about the points. So <laughs> not, not exercise at all. Just test your understanding. Vincent, the first one, which of the following is the best reason to conduct mixed method research? And the answer goes to <laughs> letter D. The dog, correct. Wow. Good, good start. <laughs> so you want to study and to know the complete picture of what you study the complete because you you have a, you combine quantitative with qualitative together and you get complete picture of what you study good good start <laughs> and you put more pressure on wins and book big now <laughs> <laughs> number two book pick for you yes. Ali is considering conducting a mixed method study for her dissertation. Which of the following might be the biggest challenge for Ali? A, B, C, or D? Um, I think the B boy, good guess. <laughs> you know, because you laugh. No, oh, sorry. Um, I don't know. But I think the 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 dog. <laughs> the dog. <laughs> okay. No, how sad. It's B. <laughs> Why? <laughs> <laughs> um, I will say you can learn uh, how to analyze the qualitative data. And I will say, even you choose big method research and you don't know how to analyze qualitative data, but you can be trained, you can, you can learn later. But the biggest challenge is about how to, you, how to approach the participants or approach the you know the, the the research participants as well is very important for 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 Ali and uh, just back to the research paper we finished reading right we're talking about LGBTQ I think it's the biggest challenge is how to approach just wins and you always say oh you don't know exactly lgbtq they cover i mean women uh, transgender women or transgender men or not something like that i think it's a very biggest challenge how to approach the sample right or the subject you study but good try yeah don't don't feel guilty it's okay it's okay and you say that even you think you lack of skills in qualitative data analysis, but we can, we can upscale as well. Yeah. Wins your turn. 
which of the following is the core characteristic of this methods research? It's core. <laughs> A. And the answer goes to? Letter A. A. Yeah. Okay. And yes. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you survive. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so yeah. when you use mixed meta research, it means you try to integrate two forms of data, right? Quantitative and qualitative. You, you integrate things. If you don't integrate, don't call that you do a mixed meta research. You yeah. just use multiple methods multiple of data, methods collection. data yeah. collection. Okay, good. Now, back to Vincent again. The paradigm debate period primarily focus on, uh, I will say, uh, sorry, I didn't teach you about the philosophy of, of this method research, right? But just have a good guess to the paradigm means philosophy, the worldview uh, about, yeah, about, about qualitative and quantitative research. So, Vincent, how about, I mean, the people or the person like Chris Well, right? The godfather of uh, mixed method research. What do you think? They, they, they have a debate about the paradigm of what? <laughs> Letter. The answer goes to? Letter D. Oh, sorry? Letter D, dog. D, dog. Okay, but the answer is B boy. <laughs> Thank you. Good try. <laughs> it's talking about the assumption, you know, as you can see from uh, the research article we read, uh, they're talking about the context. So if you, if you want to understand the context, you need qualitative research, right? And if you want to know or want to test the theory or hypothesis, you need quantitative. And that's just a debate because we, I mean, 30 years ago, it's quite separate. They separate quantitative with qualitative, right? That is a, that's why mixed method research paradigm just happened because they, oh, in practice, you can do both. <laughs> you know, you can do both. You you can test the theory, and you can you know, and you can understand the subject or you know the the, the participants as well, the worldview of participants. You can do at the same time, right? But at the beginning, they have a serious debate about assumptions. Maybe say the enemy <laughs> as well. But not your, not not, not your period now because you, we quite a compromise. Yeah, we have a, we can work together. Bookbit, now, your turn. Oh, sorry. Okay. Your turn. A researcher is interested in using qualitative methods to develop a conceptual model and then needs to test that model using quantitative methods. <laughs> what mixed method design is most appropriate? So you can cut the dog off, <laughs> right? <laughs> because you already learned. Oh, we, cut, we can cut B-boy, sorry. We already learned. 
um, it's, it's proletary sequential design because it starts with the qualitative one and then quantitative mm -hmm. with both. <laughs> okay. You're quite sure, right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> and the answer is the dog. Yeah, correct. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> but actually, it's a, it's a, a good, I mean, a good beginning to to know exactly what kind of the design you you want. But yeah, now Pukpik, you understand the concept now. <laughs> Thank you. And now, wins your turn. Sorry. Wins, which of the following is an important component in a mixed methods? Title. Title. So you got experience of reading the research article now. So a mixed method title. Which one is very important? Letter B. Uh, what? It's either letter B or letter D. Letter uh -huh. B, like boy, or letter D. I, I'm supposed <laughs> to give only one answer. Okay, yes, only one <laughs> answer. <laughs> so. <laughs> okay. Um, Choose the best one that suits you. <laughs> I mean, mixed methods title, you know, uh, don't, don't get me wrong, the title. D. The, the dog. B. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. So, um, yeah, even, I mean, the research article we, we have read, they're talking about LGBTQ, right? Yeah, so mm. they have a major topic study rather than, even, even they have a, you know, subtitle. They, they call, oh, multi, let me say, a qualitative, did win something, blah, blah, blah. It's quite catchy, right? But it's not, 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 not the important component, right? Because the important component is a topic you want to study, LGBTQ. Mm. Vincent, now your turn. It's quite quick, right? <laughs> um, which of the following uh, components of an interview protocol? I think it's quite general, right? I mean, for any kinds of the topic we have learned <laughs> for many weeks, right? They're talking about interview protocol as well. So what kind of components of an interview protocol? The answer goes to letter <laughs> between <laughs> the, uh, okay component interview protocol Letter A. A? Uh, I'm choosing A and between A and B. <laughs> okay. Letter A. Okay. A? Okay. This is your final answer. But the correct answer is oh. the dog. <laughs> I, I, Maybe a Chan <laughs> will get angry with you. Yeah, sorry, sorry. <laughs> but letter D is one of my choice. <laughs> But I'm confused with the protocol, the, the, the interview protocol. Maybe I, I did not have, I, I had a different context of the word protocol. Okay. But let me uh, one of my choice. Now, Vincent try to beg you for mercy, yeah, Chan Kok. <laughs> Vincent forget about what you teach. <laughs> 
Okay. Um, I, I would say uh, just remind all of you, uh, when you're talking about survey, we use questionnaire, right? right. They use a questionnaire. But for interview, they use interview protocol or interview guide, right? It's quite a flexible and open end. Yeah, it's quite flexible and open end. <laughs> so <laughs> you, you can say excuse to Ajahn. Go. Book now your turn. Don't let Ajahn go down. Book pick, Don. Sorry, joking. Okay. Bring me a cake then. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Chetty. Chetty is employing is employing an explanatory sequential mismatch of design to examine nursing communication. Which of the following would you recommend regarding sampling? Sampling. No? A, B, C, or D dog. Uh, the keyword is explain, explanatory. Yeah, we just answer me about, yeah, you start with qualitative first, right? Sequential, um, I think. Oh, sorry, you start with quantitative, yeah, and, and then qualitative. Yeah. So I think number three, C cat. C cat. Yes. Okay, you sure? Um. <laughs> you you, <laughs> you can. <laughs> okay, okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. Sorry to make you get confused. Okay. Um. The answer is. This is your final answer. Pick. Um. B boy. Oh, sorry. C cat. Yes, on the explanatory oh. is. We'll, we'll start with qualitative and then quantitative, right? Okay. Yeah. Yes. And yeah. Um, <laughs> okay. <laughs> so you can. Nope. Good. Okay. A very good try. Yeah. So you start with quant and then qual, right? And yeah, yeah, the yeah. qual sample. Yeah. yeah the, the qual sample must. Oh, Chris Bell, they say must, not should, not just only should, must. Include some individual from the quantitative pair. Yeah, they got the same person, right? Yes. Good. Good try. <laughs> you survive, <Phuc> Bek. <laughs> Otherwise, you have to buy cake for a <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Wins. Now you turn. <laughs> I'm, I'm getting nervous right now. <laughs> Like a game show. <laughs> <laughs> yes, a millionaire game <laughs> because you have to buy sweets or drink for Jan. <laughs> Ali has used an explanatory game. Explain means you start with quantity. Yes, quantity and then qualitative. Yeah. To study leadership in public service organizations. So, which of the following is the most likely point? of again keyword integration in her study so a b c or d The keyword is integration. Yeah, uh, <laughs> I'm I'm torn between C or D. I okay. I will opt to choose letter D. D. Okay. <laughs> so, a correct answer is 
Si oh, Kat. My God. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> don't, yeah. Don't don't worry. <laughs> yeah, uh, I, I, cho- I chose between a... C or D, but yeah. Okay. <laughs> if one of okay. <laughs> so yeah, the, the keyword from from C from the letter C cat, it means follow up. Yes, you have mm. a follow up qualitative, yes. Yeah. To illuminate or explain survey oh, results, yeah. right? Yeah. Don't worry. It's just you know, test your memory. <laughs> Don't think too much. <laughs> and Vincent, again, your turn. Uh, a colleague is conducting an exploratory sequential business method. Right. Explore. So start with qual qual first, and then quant to adapt a leadership questionnaire for use in a new setting, what would be the best structure to order the method discussion in the article? Uh, they ask you about how to present, yes, how to present uh, the results or discuss the results in the article. So again, exploratory, or oh, start with qual, then quant, right? Um, but how the middle, right? <laughs> because you have a, a middle, yeah, middle terms, yeah, in the middle, yeah, so. Sure. The correct answers goes to letter B, boy. B boy. Yeah. Yes. Are you sure? Yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> 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 okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Good. Qualitative, and then you develop. Instrument, right? And quantitative. Yes. Good. Good try. Good. Good guess. <laughs> and wins and book big maybe. Oh, why? Uh, the question I can answer you didn't ask me, and <laughs> and and for the tough one you asked. <laughs> yeah, this is <laughs> it's a human life, right? <laughs> a book big. Book big. No, <laughs> no, no <answer. laughs> Yeah. Okay. It's uh, just uh, test your memory, but don't, don't feel guilty or don't worry about the scores because, yeah, you have a lot of homework to do, right? So <laughs> this week, you're, yeah, it's time to relax. <laughs> Again. And <laughs> for the last 15. <laughs> For the last 15 minutes, I will uh, mention about our term paper because, you know, you, you, you let a little bit, right? So we're talking about uh, the term paper instruction and we, I and Jan Gop posted on the Google Classroom already. So have a look together just for a chart. Yeah, for, for very briefly, I promise. Um, Okay. You see the screen now? You see my screen now? Yeah. Okay. Just to make sure that you understand uh, our term paper instruction. Uh, thank you again for Jan Gok to remind me because you <laughs> we have to let you know early because you have to spend more time to think about the answers you write on the document on the term paper. Just have a look together. No. Due date is November 23rd. <laughs> and yeah, as a document, right? But you have to 
give us an oral presentation one by one, right? So that's why we assign you different case. So you can ask your friend <laughs> because you got different case. <laughs> and you know, um, let's have a look. It's a, uh, yeah, do your best because it's 30 points and consider the case given below one by one. Yeah, each of you have different case and discuss the following issues, at least two pages of A4, right? So, but you, you, can, you can do it more than two pages, five or six pages, it'll be fine. But don't forget including the reference list you know, you have to uh, search <laughs> and looking for new or some reference place to, to uh, confirm your discussion as well in terms of, you know, how to do qualitative research ethically. <laughs> and yeah, Jan Top not, you know, not cruel, then God's <laughs> very kind and give you some practical issues <laughs> that you can guide you to, to, to answer exact, uh, correctly. Like, uh, oh, you have to think about access, you know, how to access the data of participant, right? And, you know, venue or the location or places that the data collection happened. And the data collection methods, you know, as a interview, online interview, or even focus group that every, you know, interviewee, they know each other, right? And recording and storing data, for example, but you can, you can explain more or discuss in details, right? And the second one is the ethical issues that may be informed consent. Informed consent means you have to tell your participants to know first before you start collecting the data. And how to work with vulnerable groups. Vincent, you have to face with children. Fukpik, you face with, yeah, you. So top <laughs> children, children who you know <laughs> have to have a, have no education, and you know, Vince, you have a alcoholic <laughs> in the Philippines context. Yeah, a lot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's fact. <laughs> that's that's a fact. <laughs> in Thailand too. But but no, no, but I don't drink. A lot, you know. Okay. <laughs> you concerned about the healthy, yeah, healthy habit. <laughs> yeah. And final, you know, final issues they're talking about. Oh, sorry. The difficulties that could potentially be encountered by the researchers. So you have to predict, you know, please jot the, jot the keyword. You have to predict when accessing the participant, uh, seeking from concerns, uh, you have to predict difficulties, right? Or problems in advance, you, you collect the data and storing data, and you will meet these tough questions again when you apply for IRB. I want you are ready, right? And the final one action that researcher can take to overcome avoid or reduce. And today you learn from the limitation of the research article we read together, right? We have a limitation, we know exactly, but what we can do, we, can so, we cannot solve everything, but what we can do is to overcome, avoid or even reduce the difficulty that has been identified. You, you can predict uh, what will happen, right? And again, you can prevent 
Yeah, you can prevent or even the preventive measures to reduce the difficulty that you face from the vulnerable people. And the case assigned for you is quite different one by one. So when you give an oral presentation, you have a very good chance to listen to your classmate because we got a different cases. Okay. Any questions from the term paper instruction today? We've got around, I think about two weeks, yeah, to finish it. Oh, Jan Gop, I I'm forget how long uh, our student can give an oral presentation. How long? What do you think? Mm, how's about 10 minutes? 10 minutes. And to 15 minutes. Okay. Right. Thank you. So, uh, do we have to, to provide more information? Like, basically, I take it. We have to write uh, uh, as a research design, or we just follow the um, the, the issue. Um, that, for example, uh, do we have, uh -huh. yes, for example, that, that, um, uh -huh. yes, they have uh. to indicate, like, for example, the location, for example, I have to, um, uh, uh, I mean, um, a deeper of information that I have to, to indicate. Okay. Or it, it just, yeah. Thank you. Uh, let me uh, make it clear. Uh, don't, don't think too much about other elements of your research proposal. Just think about what will happen if you get into the field work or uh, when you start mm -hmm. collecting the data. Okay. So, don't, don't, don't think too much. Don't, don't, don't think uh, beyond uh, <laughs> the, the, the field work. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Okay, Ajahn. So I'm just going to uh, clear out like, uh, in this case, we're going to assume that the review of the, uh, like, the the whole proposal is already done, and mm -hmm. we're yes. just anticipating the ethical issues when yeah. we going to implement the study already. Yes, no need no need to mention research question or mm -hmm. sampling or no mm -hmm. no just think about mm -hmm. what will happen in the field work. Right, mm. and you just mm. uh, predict what will happen and how to reduce, uh, make it uh, smooth when you yeah when, when you face the vulnerable groups like this. Mm -hmm. okay. uh, sorry. Okay, it's clear now. <laughs> sorry. Yeah. Um, I have clarification. Uh, for my case, since mm -hmm. uh, my case will be, uh, there would be a uh, school environment. Uh, mm -hmm. Will I be the one to define the the what school environment? Like for example, if uh, in the Philippine setting we have public and private, mm -hmm. or if the school is public located in the metro or in the province, something like that. So. Um should I define it here so that I could focus on it or will I consider? Um, do you mind, Vincent, if you just thinking about school environment in general? You in know, general. Yeah, yeah you, we, we, we can see them in everyday life, both public or private schools. Yeah, in general, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. no, 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 no need to, to, more, to be more specific. Yes. That's fine. Mm -hmm. Thinking about the children under the age of 10. <laughs> yes. Where are they? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> a primary, <laughs> a primary student. Yes. Yeah. How to get to them, how to get to that place. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And sometimes they can't have an interview with you alone. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's something like that. <laughs> okay. 
can you just go to that school and hey hey come on i have <laughs> no i have candy so ice cream to you <laughs> uh, I, I, i don't think that you can contact them um how to say uh at how at that moment you need to do something before right yes okay so i'll just focus on the school environment in general yeah in general mm -hmm. Uh, the environment but you can meet in both private or public schools in Philippines. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, um and may I just ask a little bit like uh why 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 uh I mean the private or the public school setting is it affect any any like a data collection? Uh, uh or should we i mean should you take it into consideration uh in my because uh for uh for pop for for private uh, because there is a big difference in terms of the student life in public here and in private uh in public i think uh, in public it's more um uh how do you call this um generally speaking uh in public school here in the public school setting they are more um so lenient in terms of um unlike in private school there are more limitations there compared in public and i think with, with in terms of resources it's more limited on the public okay so there are the but I can I but I can put it in the context of a general uh, uh, school environment then I just enumerate uh, and assume that both will be applicable on both public and private. Mm -hmm. Good. Oh, Thank you. you remind you remind me about my experience as you know uh, for private university library some some they didn't allow you to collect the data you know. <laughs> I, I do I yeah I never forget about uh, the the private university library they didn't mm -hmm. allow you to collect the data yes, yes. Mm -hmm. you know <laughs> where <laughs> because yeah, there is a one state yes, a one as well right uh, private yes. in general private schools are more restrictive than, right? yeah they, they they have their own regulation right Yeah. Yeah. So it's quite easy mm -hmm. to, to, to deal with, but mm -hmm. it depends on them, right? <laughs> but mm -hmm. for the, the public, it's okay because they quite uh, do something officially, right? Mm -hmm. Or formal, yeah. Yeah, formally. Yeah. Any things, any questions for term paper instruction? Because you can start now, <laughs> start right now. Yeah. Okay, so that is for today. And yeah, good luck for your <laughs> assignment and homeworks a lot in many <laughs> courses. <laughs> This is uh, I <laughs> the most important month <laughs> for, for yeah, your study. Yeah. <laughs> Me too. Uh, <laughs> a, lot <yeah>. of things. <laughs> a lot of assignments as well. <laughs> Okay. Mark. <laughs> <laughs> okay, clap and okay, see you clap. next see you. time. Clap. Good okay, luck. Bye bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye everyone. Bye. 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 Bye.